We're now going to move on to another uh, recorded video. This one's on queer equalities, reimagining uh, nature through queer experience. And we're going to hear an excerpt from uh, Seda Mika, who is a non-binary artist, and we're going to get to hear about their art in their own words. Thank you. Hello everyone. Uh, hello and welcome. I'm Harold Offay. Um, I'm an artist and a reader uh, in fine art here at Leeds Beckett University. And thank you so much for joining us here today uh, for this, uh, our first in a series of four talks planned in collaboration with Leeds Art Gallery and Leeds Beckett University. Um, the talks are all organised to expand and enrich um, the themes and ideas explored in the exhibition, Natural Encounters. Um, it's sadly currently closed due to the current lockdown, but hopefully due to reopen soon uh, when it's safe to do so. And the exhibition will be running till the 20th of February next year. So hopefully you'll get a chance to see um, the show. Um, we have Sade Misha, Roseanne Robertson and Victoria Sin. All three artists' practices could be said to be informed by an interdisciplinary set of practices termed queer ecologies, um, which is uh, our title for today's event. Um, these are practices that reimagine nature, biology and sexuality, as well as evolutionary processes, ecological interactions and environmental politics in light of queer theory. This is thinking that disrupts heteronormative notions of nature, standing as a powerful corrective to views that equate natural with straight, while queer is um, often held in, uh, to be against nature. As Catriona Sanderlands and Bruce Erickson write in their intro to the anthology on queer ecologies, perhaps the, queer, perhaps the key question for queer ecologies is, what does it mean that ideas, spaces, and practices designated as nature are often so vigorously defended against queers in a society in which that very nature is increasingly degraded and exploited? I'm sure we'll return to this question in the discussion, but perhaps we should also address the term queer, um, which has evolved over time and place from a synonym for odd to a homosexual slur to a reclaimed politically charged adjective, noun and verb. As the queer theorist Sharon Marcus writes, queer has become a compact alternative to lesbian, gay, bisexual, transgender, but it also emphasizes affinity over identity. It is often referred to as an umbrella term for all non-heterosexual identities. However, within queer theory, queer is often used as a verb. So queering can become a tool for the social and political subversion of the dominant culture, a way of perhaps challenging and deconstructing dominant hierarchies, power structures, binaries, and notions of essentialist identities. My body is rarely seen in abyss. Always blue. It's new this, white. Most of the time I'm squashed. Faking sinew as a clobber through the gaps. Mm -hmm. Grace is considered feminine, so I am not. I hate myself for running. Clamouring towards the enemy. I don't want to be on side. That's the point. The trim, the trousers, the lines. Still with a 16 quid sheen on the lips. It's to be all, nothing, something else entirely. Mm. Yeah. That was a clip from a film called Dulux Abyss. Um, this is where my whole kind of project 
to do with ecologies and nature and my body started, um, even though that is a film indoors. Um, the project was about looking at how posturing is gendered and how I feel that if my body is postured in a certain way um, or if I move in a certain way, I feel that certain expectations are put on me, whether masculine, feminine, male or female. And so that project itself was um, me using life drawing poses from the art classes that I'd been to. Um, again, those that are gendered male and those that are gendered female, using them both to um, kind of toe the line in between and erase the binaries as a non-binary person kind of looking to exist somewhere in the middle and outside of the binary all at once. This has been the kind of peak of my work in the outdoors. Um, I wanted to make a film of my counselling experience. I wanted to make something tangible um, to kind of memorialise my experience with counselling last year. And I was immediately drawn to being outdoors. I, I knew that it had to be um, in an outdoor setting. And I just had the idea to take two chairs, set them up in somewhere beautiful, <laughs> and um, just record myself speaking. I'd had a really trying time with my mental health. Um, and I had a really amazing experience with counselling. And the two things that made me feel centred and kind of sane were being outdoors um, and being in those sessions. So I figured, like, why not combine the two? Um, so this image is from my... Um, well, the film is actually showing in Leeds now with Natural Encounters. Well, with the original exhibition, the, the chairs accompany it on a patch of land. And I really just wanted to bring that kind of feel, feeling that I got being outside into the gallery and have people be able to experience that. Um, I just wanted it to feel immersive. Um, and I want to do more kind of installation stuff. Um, and yeah, so the next, the film that you'll see in a minute is called It Takes Time and it's me talking and kind of, I wouldn't even say imitating a counselling session, it was me actually having a counselling session with myself. And the original idea was to ask my actual counsellor to be there, but I thought I might step, be stepping the line, so I didn't want to ask. Um, but I went to Malum, trolled through the river that you saw me in before, brought the chairs over and... Um, just sat and talked and it was really again really free and it wasn't weird at all and um, people were walking past but it was fine um, and people asked questions but it just feels like something that I'll definitely return to I, I did make another one in my back garden it wasn't as beautiful but um, it, it just feels like a staple now definitely something that will continue within my practice um, and I'll continue to grow and again, have a different relationship with my body in the outdoors, with my thoughts in the outdoors. And um, yeah, I'm, I'm, glad I, I'm glad I did it. Um, I guess that's me done now. But uh, if we go to the next slide, you'll see a little clip of it next time. I feel good this week. Um, I feel like optimistic I feel ready to I don't know ready to continue on the stuff that I left over from last year it is a bit of pressure when you go into a new year and it's like you're supposed to make all of these changes and you're supposed to make the most of your time and you're supposed to I don't know have this like blank slate and start fresh and it can be a bit much <laughs> this expectation that you're really gonna like go for your goals and I don't know just feel like brand new and that you've got to make something of yourself and it, I don't know it's like you spend all of the December really gathering things up and rounding things off and building up to this like peak and this like I don't know apex and then it January it's just like Brilliant. Thank you so much, Sade. That was fantastic.
Wow. Um, I haven't actually seen that video um, yet, but what an incredible and moving and important message, um, especially when we've just heard what we've heard um, from Abton about uh, the mental health of LGBT people. And we know that mental health at the current time is getting worse because of isolation. Um, and just that idea of going out into nature um, by yourself, go out and talk to people um, about, well, a person, <laughs> uh, about how you're feeling, potentially journal outside, all really important ways that we can get more in tune with our own well-being and mental health.